in Part A. They ask us to use appropriate graphs and tables to summarize the color and the clarity of the given set of data. So all I really need to focus on is the color and the clarity. I don't need any of this other data. I don't want to delete it though because I do have other questions. I've got parts B, uh, B, C, D, E, and F. But I do want to be able to work with this data so I'm going to make a copy of this tab. So down in the bottom you'll see that it says data and if you right click on that you can create a copy, move or copy. I'm going to create a copy and move it to the end. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I can relabel this. I'll just double click on that and I can call this A. So any changes that I make to this data won't affect my original data. For example, I'm focused on color and clarity. So I'm going to delete the years, the carrot, the certification, and the price. I don't need any of that for part A. So this is all happening in tab A. If I go back to my data tab down here, there's my original data. So I can use that again to form a new tab for part B and then again for part C and so on. So here in part A, what I'm going to do is uh, they've asked me to create appropriate graphs and tables to summarize the color and the clarity of a given set of data. So let's start off with uh, color. Now the way that I'm going to do this is using pivot tables. And pivot tables you're going to find I'm going to use um, throughout all of these questions. Pivot tables are very, very easy to use. They aren't necessarily what you might have seen in your lecture slides, but pivot tables will provide you with the appropriate tables and with the appropriate graphs. And once you learn how to do them, they're very, very easy and they're very powerful to use. So um, semester after semester I've been using these. These are completely fine for your class. Um, so whether or not pivot tables have been mentioned in your class is not an issue. You're definitely going to be able to use the results that you get from a pivot table. Okay, so having said that, how do we set up a pivot table? Well, depending on the version of Excel you've got, you're going to have pivot tables um, show up in different places. Sometimes they're in data, in the data tab, but usually they're in the insert tab. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert a pivot table. Now once I click on that, it's going to open up a, a, a dialog box here. And one of the first things that it'll ask me is what is the range of data that I want to deal with. So by clicking on this little button here, it allows me to go and select my data. So you'll notice that as I highlight um, my color values, including the label up there, as I highlight them, it changes uh, what's in that little dialog box. And so I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and so let's see. I've got it all highlighted all the way down to the bottom, but I don't want to go any further than that. So what you definitely don't want to do is you don't just want to select um, A. You don't just want to select column A. Notice that now it's highlighted even all of the blank cells down here. We really don't want that. What we want to do is this. I'm going to go back up to the top now. I'm going to select color and I'm just going to highlight down till I get to the end of my actual values. You don't want blanks, blank cells in there, that'll mess up the pivot table. Once I've got that set up properly, I'll click on that button again, and then it's a good idea to choose a new worksheet. It just helps to keep things easy to organize. So I'm going to choose a new worksheet, and this is what I see. Now let's make this a little bit bigger. You get an empty table, and then over here there's a control panel. And there's only one thing going on in here, we, we've got color. In order to create the actual table that we're going to hand in, drag color down to your row labels, and you'll see that that creates different row labels that are uh, given the title color. So these are all of the different kinds of color uh, values that showed up in the data. And then once again, drag color down to values. And so you should get these totals, 16, 44, 82, and so on. Now, depending on your version of Excel, you might not see that this says count of color. It might say sum of color. If that's the case, right click on any one of your totals. And then go to value field settings. And you can change from sum to count or whatever it started off as being, you want to change it to count. Because what it is that we're doing here is we're dealing with color, which is a nominal variable. 
and nominal variables really only allow you to keep track of one thing about them. We can count them. For example, if you were doing a survey of what gender people were in your classroom, you really can only count how many men and how many, how many women there are. You can't take the average gender, you can't uh, do any mathematics, you can really just count how many people fit into each category. Colors are also categories, they're also nominal data. So the only sort of, um, the only sort of information we can keep track of is the count. How many, how many diamonds fit into color category D? How many diamonds fit into color category E? So that's why, I, that's why we have to have counts and not sums or any other kind of mathematical operations going on here. So this is it. This is my this is my table that they're looking for. This is the appropriate table. In order to um, make use of this, all I have to do is just highlight it, copy it, and go to a Word document, and then just paste it in. So that would be for color. So this doesn't look pretty, but they're not they're not going to they're not going to be marking me. Uh, based on my, uh, based on the aesthetics here, we just have to get the appropriate table in. Now, if you want to change this around, you can change this around. There's plenty of ways of doing that, uh, changing the look in Word, but I'm not going to worry about that. We just need to get the appropriate table here. So this is for color. So what about the appropriate graph? Well, that's actually very easy once you've got this table set up. Now that I've got this highlighted, or if I didn't, I would just highlight this again. I can go back to insert and I'm going to choose a graph. And it's a column graph that I want here. So I'm going to choose the column graph and a point of advice when you're working on assignments in this class, always choose the first option that comes up. It's going to be the simplest, most straightforward and trust me, they don't want to see anything to um, too weird going on. They don't want three-dimensional shapes in your graphs. They just want a plain and simple graph. So the first option is going to be the best in all cases. So I'm picking my um, my bar graph here, and it appears to be set up um, almost ready to hand in. I've got the different heights of bars representing the different frequencies or the different counts. It would appear that F is the most common color. Uh, the least common color is D. I don't really need this here. This doesn't tell me much. I'm going to delete that. Um, this is not a great title. I'm going to double click on that and change this. Um, I can just call it color. I could call it color of diamonds and so on. Um, any graph that has uh, labels on the axes should have titles. So this didn't automatically give me any titles. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to change that. Um, in this particular version of Excel, I'm going to go up to, it's currently on design, I'm going to go to layout. And then this allows me to choose axis titles. And so I can have a title below my axis. These are the colors. I can also go to my axis titles and have a vertical axis. And so, again, I can call this uh, count or frequency. And that's it. This is the appropriate graph. This is my bar chart. I don't have to do anything else to this. So I'm going to copy this and I'll go to my Word document and I'll paste this in. So there, for color, I've got the appropriate table, the, appro the appropriate graph, and that's all that I need. I'm going to do the same thing now. They also asked me to do this with clarity. So I'll go back to my data and I'm going to go back to the original data set. So I need to go back to part A. Actually, before I leave this sheet number three, I'm going to, re um, I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this A and this is going to be color. Okay. So now I can go to my original data. So let's go back up to the top and I'm going to work on clarity. So I'm going to insert, just like I did the last time, a pivot table. My, my range is going to change. I'm going to include just my clarity column. 
and you'll notice that I've only highlighted down to the very bottom one. I haven't included any empty cells. So once I'm done doing my highlighting, I can press this button again, make sure it's a new worksheet, click on OK, and let's um, do the same thing we did before. Over in the control panel over here, drag Clarity down to Row Labels. That'll show us the different row labels for Clarity. And then I can put this down to the different values. And so this gives me properly a count of Clarity. Now what I don't like that's going on here is the order. So we're going to need to change the order. Um, see currently it's IF, which is the best, but after that it's supposed to come very, very small one and very, very small two, but instead I've got very small one and very small two. So I have to change the order of these. So to sort them, to change the order, what I have to do is I have to pick one of the ones that I'd like to move. So I'd like to move this very, very small one, highlight it, and then hover right around the edge until you see that cross hairs of, of arrows. Once you can see that, you can drag it, click to drag it up to where you want it to be. So I want that to be right under IF. Same thing with VVS2. Hover right above the crosshairs, or hover right above the, the border lines, so you get the crosshairs, click and drag it up. So now it's in the correct order. And you'll also notice that the numbers that went with it changed as well. They moved as well. So now this is in the correct order. Clarity goes from the best clarity down to the worst clarity. So this is my table for clarity. I'm going to copy and paste that into my Word document. And then I can put in my, my graph. Now the graph I have to make, so I've already got all the proper stuff highlighted. I'm going to insert a column graph, and there we go. So we're going to do the same things again. I'm going to get rid of this uh, legend on the side. I'm going to call this uh, or label this as dealing with my clarity. I do want some titles, so I'm going to put titles in. Uh, so again, I'm just going to go up to layout, go to axis titles. I need a horizontal title. This is going to be clarity. And my vertical axis title is going to be, once again, frequency. Okay, so that's it. I've got my chart. So I'm copying that and I'm pasting that over here. Okay, so maybe I'll, what I'll do is I'll put, um, put this on its own page. So I'm gonna create a page break so you can see all the Clarity stuff together. And I on my first page, I've got all of my color stuff together. Now this is, um, this is an opportunity for us to make a, a quick comment and all you should be looking to do in terms of summarizing what you see here is making a very very brief comment maybe one or two sentences at most just to say what it is that we can see going on with the colors so what i can see here is that um, the most common color is f and the least common color is d that's about it that's about all that I can really say about anything that I see with either the graph or sorry the table or the graph. And so that's going to be the um, the limit to my comments here. I'm just going to say that um, most common color is F. So what does F actually stand for? If I look back, it's the fancy dark brown green. So that's from the legend that they gave us on the very first page. Fancy, dark, brown, green. And the least common color is which? Um, that's D, and D is fancy, dark, orange, brown. Okay. So that's all that I really can say. There's nothing more that I can determine. Um, there's nothing more that I can determine based on my graph or my table because that's all that you can get from nominal data is just to focus on the counts. Now, 
um, here with clarity. What stands out? Well, the most common clarity is VS1. So that's really all that I can say is um, the most common clarity. You could say the most common, you could say the most frequent, the highest count, uh, you could say the mode or the modal class. But here I'm just going to say most common clarity is VS1 and the least common is which? Is IF, which I guess would make sense that the most um, the most highly prized clarity is going to be the one that happens the least often. Okay, so that takes care of part A. We've, uh, we've given them everything that they've asked for, and so now we can move on to part B.